College football recap, week number five, brought to you by Tunica Travel, Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can go bet at any of their five, six, six now, goodness gracious, I've said five for so long, six sports books down there, Horseshoe, Sam's Town, First Jackpot, Hollywood, I'm trying to do this off memory, Fitz, and I'm missing one, I'm missing one, Gold Strike, Gold Strike, got all six of them. Good job. Fire. All right, let's jump into a uh, college football recap. We got uh what? 10 games? 10 Yeah, I got get I got 10 games. You ready to do this? Come on. We'll start with Ohio State Penn State. That was a big one. 27-26. Look, Haskins, Dwayne Haskins from Ohio State ended up 22 out of 39, 270 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. Trace McSorley was the star of the game, though, right? Did you watch this game all the way through? I watched a whole lot of this game, and and I have, I have a little bit of beef with Haskins' numbers. Yeah, because they weren't good early. Fourth well, nope, quarter, fourth nope, quarter. Not worried about that. Even even the total numbers, eighty percent of those yardage came when he dumped a ball off oh, behind and the and line yeah. of scrimmage or. Um, just a, like a little screen pass, a little flare pass, and, and the, the running the back or the receiver took it 30, 40 yards at a chunk at a time. That needs to go into consideration when you're talking about who a Heisman Trophy winner is and who's not. Agreed. Because he, he looked, all yards, passing yards, are not the same. He looked completely, uh, what's the word, shook. Oh, he yeah. He looked shook. Oh, yeah. Almost the entire game. First true road match. So we'll get back into this for a minute. I was upset that TCU move, and I don't know if it was TCU's call, TV's call, NCAA's call to take the TCU game, Ohio State game, to Jerry World, but it was a true neutral site game. That that place was seventy percent Ohio State fans. Yeah, that this was the first time he ever really faced any adversity on the road, and it it shook him. Well, now here's the, he did play in the third and fourth quarter at the Big House last year. So, yeah. but it but it's not really the same when you come in as the backup and, yeah. and whatever. When you are the guy, nobody in the third and fourth quarter is nearly as loud, pumped up, or crazy as you walk out there. Well, especially I mean, drive. this was a night game, yeah. and in the big house last year it was an eleven a.m. kick. It's a, it's a, it's just a different different game, game. different game. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm with you. He um, didn't handle it well. No, he didn't. Now fourth quarter, I think he played all right, but I don't think he made any, he didn't make any great throws that. That really impressed no. me. He no, I, he I got the ball to the playmakers, which I guess is his job, but there were no, you know, just really hitting somebody on a seam, hitting somebody in stride. I'm sure he did that. I know he did it. I saw some of them. Well, they they. It's just not where the bulk of his passes come from. That's where the play calling came in. Ryan Day did a fantastic job figuring out. Okay, this stuff is not working. That's right. Like he is not on his game tonight. We got to switch it up. We got to do something so, so different. Ryan Day with his play calling, that was a big time moment for him. Uh, back to Trace McSorley, 69 to 32, so only 50% passing, but 286 yards on 16 completions. That's pretty intense. Had two touchdowns, 25 rushes, 175 yards. Holy crap. Maybe one of the best catches I've seen, I don't know, two, three years in college oh, football. Yeah. That one on the sideline? Yeah. That the, was the Odell Beckham. Bonkers. That, that, and that dude is gigantic, by the way. Oh, yeah. I mean, he, he's, a, he's a grown man. Uh, Penn State's always done a good job. James Franklin, especially, has has always done a good job of finding receivers. Oh yeah, I mean, even at Vanderbilt, he put you know Jordan Matthews in the yeah. NFL. He he I mean, had he, he has found receivers. And he, if, and he knows if you want to play them. on Sundays, go to go to Franklin and yeah. and learn to play receiver for and, him, and he'll give you a spot. He will hundred percent give you a spot. Yep. Um. So yeah, I, I, I want to ask about like because a lot of this Penn State looked like the better team for the majority of it. Correct. At the end of the game, after they had given up the lead, fourth and five from like the Ohio State forty-three with just over a minute left in the game. Fourth, and they called two timeouts. Yep. So like, Penn State calls a timeout, Ohio State calls a timeout, Penn State calls a timeout. You know, it's like, what is going on here? The best play you got in the book, and the best play that it was Franklin gar- thought it was, it was garbage. Was now I, I will come at it from a different angle. I think that that was a read play. Doesn't matter. It's wrong. You, you just can't. You can't let the quarterback make that decision. Yeah, I mean, it, the deal was you got to keep it in McSorley's hands. Yeah, no, he either needs to drop back for pass. Pass not there. He can run it. But, and, but, and but the nobody is, else touches the ball unless it's a receiver. McSorley was averaging seven yards a carry. Correct. 
Miles Sanders was averaging like 2.7 that, yards a carry. That's that's why it was wrong. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree 100%. Like, and I, once I you think, hand it to Miles, you know you don't have the option to pass. Yeah. I mean, that's it, you, you got you got nothing there. No. Like, it was it was a bad it was, decision, bad call, bad everything. It was call, a great everything. game all the way through. They messed it up at the end, and I don't blame the players. I 100% blame the coaching staff. I think they overthought it. Oh, I yeah, they, they outsmarted themselves. Yeah, they really outsmarted. And I think a lot of that is they've got this this mantra, not mantra, they, they've got this uh, this Ohio State thing hanging over them, right? Like, they've only beaten Ohio State once. They feel like they're on the same level with them. And it and it just becomes like, holy crap, we have to, we got to win this game. We've seen schools do this in the past with rivalries for a long time, and, and it killed them. It killed them yeah. forever. I mean, Back in the day, Alabama struggled for a decade, and all they wanted to do was beat Auburn. Oh, yeah. Instead of finding a coach that could build a program and win, they were just trying to find somebody who would beat their rival. Don't worry about beating your rival. Just consistently get better, and eventually you're going to start beating your rival. Yeah. And and everybody's giving Harbaugh that same crap, and I think – I think back to all these coaches that come and go, and some of them are pretty damn good coaches. And and I just think you're focusing on the wrong thing right now. Let's yeah. build this program and let's get some momentum and let's get better every year. I agree. Uh, next big game, we'll go on and try and, and fly through uh, some of the rest of these. Yeah, we'll go a little faster. Notre Dame 38, Stanford 17. Ian Book looks like the real they whooped deal, their butt. man. They whooped their butt. Yeah, they they absolutely did. Uh, Love Notre, goes out. Notre Dame had 550 yards of total offense. Yeah, Stanford had like less than 230. It was I mean, it bad. was it, it was, bad. and it was tied 14 to 14 early. Like it looked like it might be a ball game, but even then, you could tell, you know, that there was an issue. It wasn't the same 14 14. No. Uh, now a big thing from this game: Notre Dame starting center goes out with a torn ACL. Uh, well, ACL MCL, and. I mean, he was like the glue guy. Yeah. So I'm we'll curious see. what's going to happen with that. But Notre Dame looks really good. As long as they've got somebody somewhat dependable, I mean, this could be a 12-0 and team that we're looking what, at. What do you think about Stanford going forward? Um, what's the condition of love? I don't think that really matters. Like, Ooh. I know that that's kind of ridiculous. I don't think the that – The runner-up for the Heisman last year doesn't matter. I know, but I, I think that – I don't think that Bryce Love is what makes this offense tick right now. So here's the problem. This is see, this is why I see things a little bit differently. Is, um, it's just how I see things differently. I think teams have done an unbelievable job game planning for him. Yeah, which has opened up the pass a lot. If now you don't have to game plan for him, I think there's other guys behind him that can run the ball that haven't gotten the opportunity. I'm not saying you're they're going to be right. to the David level. Shaw's going to run the football, and yeah. he's got dudes. In the, you're like, probably right. I think it's it's better for them, maybe, if Bryce Love isn't – and I know that's ridiculous. That's so crazy, I know man. it's nuts, but I think it might actually be better for them. They're not going to run into another defense like this oh, other than course, Washington. No, yeah. yeah. Like Until Washington they play good Washington, defense. they won't play another team but, as good as yeah, this. Nobody else on the schedule is anything like this. No. They should go. They should beat up Utah pretty good this week, right? I would think so. I would think so too. Yeah, I think I think they got the horses to be able to do that. Okay. Uh, Clemson twenty seven, Syracuse twenty three. Now you called this one. You, now I don't know that you called it out right. I didn't call it out right. I didn't have the stones to to put to put money line Which, action on. Thank it. goodness, right? Because like, no, it came yeah. down at the end. And listen, Dino Babers is still a grown ass man. Oh yeah, he just is. He is. There were some questionable coach. calls. Oh, but the end of the game, he bumbled that and, and yeah. cost him that game. He pulled a James Franklin, but instead of it being one play, it was it was like a series. It, it's almost like he he knew, like holy, I'm I'm not supposed yeah. to be. I'm in not this supposed spot. to be here, and he kind of panicked at the end. Yeah, but man, he went into Clemson and gave them all the hell they could handle. Yeah, uh, Trevor Lawrence out with an injury. Um, Concussion protocol. It looked like he was fine at the end of the game. You could yeah. see him out there celebrating and whatnot. He'll probably be back this week, but he is still in concussion protocol. So, I mean, nobody really knows, right? Like, he he might not be back this nah, week. No, he'll be fine. College doesn't have the rules the NFL does. They don't use uh, – Even even like, if he un, did – like Whatever you would consider it unbiased. He could be out for four weeks, and they would be fine. Like, he's got uh, – Probably, yeah. He's got multiple weeks to go. Like, they're playing at Wake Forest this week. Wake Forest has no defense whatsoever. So, the, the Chase Bryce kid – He'll be fine. Will be fine. And he made some throws at the end of the game. I mean, this dude is not like some, you know, one-star nobody. 
Yeah, I mean, okay. he was I mean, he's he, a three star kid, which is I mean, it's important to get those like the kids that are going to come in that don't expect yep. to play over the five stars that are going to work their tail off. It's it's what Alabama and Clemson and Ohio State and all these different places have figured out. Like you got to have backups. Yeah, like your guys are probably going to get hurt. That's just the way it is in in football nowadays. And so long as you've got like a sturdy, dependable hand. The other thing is Clemson should be better than they are with the talent that they have. Like this reminds me of that Florida State team, like Jameis Winston's second team. I, I'm going to tell you this: I'm not impressed with this Clemson team. When, no. when we get to doing our rankings, I'm 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 not happy with Clemson. Clemson has an impression. They've had two real tests this season. They've only played two good games: Syracuse and A and M. They almost and is lost. Syracuse really like? Uh, no, I actually do think Syracuse is a good team. And I don't know how good A&M is either, okay? I mean, they're yeah. probably pretty equal on the playing field. I know A&M people probably hate that line. I could have that. But I, I think the way they're playing right now, I don't know that there's a whole lot difference. If they were playing in a neutral site and you took all the names off the jerseys, I think it's probably an even match game. It might be pretty similar. Um, it, with that being said, they should have a, a just a crazy, insane, wrong, bad rule save them in A&U, A&M. Yeah. And then and – then, Kind of just the dudes, the defense for Syracuse just did not have the gas to keep fighting. They uh, just yeah. they didn't have the depth to keep going, especially on the road, right yeah. at Clemson. And I mean, you saw Travis at the end goes for you over play one yards. of these big boy teams. Clemson gets boat raced. Yeah, I, I believe that. Now, good thing for them, yeah, they're they not going to run into that until that. until the playoff. Maybe not. I mean, good gracious, like it, they might play Virginia Tech in the uh, conference championship game. They might play Miami in the conference championship. I mean, but are Listen, they really? Oh, 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 This Miami team after that LSU loss, they have they have looked incredibly good. They look a lot better and with L- that new quarterback. And LSU looks way better than we thought. Hey, they just beat up Miami, and maybe Miami wasn't that good. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's pump the brakes on Miami. Might not be good. I'm with you. I'm with you. Now I, I can still question it because Miami hadn't played anybody either. Well, they played LSU and they got they got boat race. They got boat so race. like you know, that's what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> let's move on from that. West Virginia 42, Texas Tech 34. Who real queer? I called for oh, man. I called for Texas Tech to cover the three and a half or four or whatever it was, and I felt pretty good about it. By the way, Alan Bowman still in the hospital today. Do you know I'm that? Not laughing at that. That's, We're recording this on Monday. Monday night. Yeah. Like Alan Bowman is yeah. still in the hospital from a collapsed lung. That's not good. That that's how hard the hit was that he took. No, that was that's, that's crazy. That's pretty. That's so he pretty rough. he went out. Jet Duffy, which is an awesome all time name, right? Third string guy because like Texas Tech starting quarterback went out week one. I was about to say this dude. Alan Bowman already. was the backup. Jet Duffy is is now your starter for the time being, and he looked pretty good. Um, they went down thirty five to ten at the half, and then. Found a way to get back in the ball game. I, I'm guessing West Virginia like just thought they had the game wrapped up. I yep. guess, but it was 35-27. Texas Tech had the ball, and they throw an interception that's returned for a touchdown. Tech gets the ball back with like a little less than two minutes left. Drives it down the field and scores. It makes it a little more respectable, I guess. But yeah, I mean that was a good win for West Virginia. Will Greer. Will Greer's unreal. Very good at throwing the football. Very good. Like, Florida fans have got to be just beside themselves. <laughs> and I know we say that every week, but it's just... So great. God, like, how could so you let great. that dude walk away? I love it. So, speaking of, let's get to Florida. All right. 13-6 to six over Mississippi State. And that was boring. Yeah, this was and a bad game. ugly. Hey, maybe and Mississippi State's not good at football. It's what I told you before the season started. Maybe you should have waited an extra week and a half... And interviewed a guy named Neil Brown or Bill Clark instead of just giving the job to every person you interviewed. Yeah. They interviewed much. four people. They offered the job to every person they interviewed. That is just thirsty. That is desperate. And you know what? You end up with the wrong dude. Yeah, you really now, do. Now, I know it's real early, but please don't tell me you don't have the guy's more head. You can't say that because this team returned more talent than every team in the West except for Alabama. People were thinking Auburn that, lost more talent than them. People were thinking that Mississippi State was going to be the third best team in the conference. No, there were people that thought they were going to be the second best team in the conference. 
No, none yeah, of the Georgia. Yeah, there were people that no. Oh, 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 oh over the West. Yeah, Sorry. in the West. Yeah, they thought, yeah, the they West. thought they were going to be better than Auburn. Yeah. Better than LSU. Yeah, I mean they they get Auburn at home, they get LSU on the road, but nobody was thinking good things of LSU that's at right. the time. No, that's right. No, uh, yeah, state seven points against Kentucky, six points against Morehead Florida. has got Ooh. to figure it out. Listen, if he starts off the SEC zero and three this week, it's going to be bad. Bad news, boy, because they still got Alabama, they still got LSU, they still got Ole Miss. I'm going to tell you this, and I, I told you before the season started. You cannot manufacture hate. You cannot walk into yep. a new place where you've never been and all of a sudden say, oh, my school hates that school. Yeah, I'll hate them too. Can't do it. Matt Luke is an Ole Miss man. He knows hate in that rivalry. Oh, yeah. He better be careful. He might not win an SEC game. No, nah, I mean, he'll – Well, what game is he going to – Arkansas? You will give an Arkansas I mean, but Arkansas has actually looked a little bit better. That's what I was so about I'd... to say. You're just going to go ahead and chalk up that Arkansas W too? No, not yet. Because I'm not. No. Uh, let's move on. Virginia Tech 31, Duke 14 – you called this one. Uh, and I Now, I did say this. I, I said I wasn't going to touch it because I didn't trust Duke's quarterback, right? And it wasn't the quarterback that was the problem. It's that Virginia Tech has has players. When, they got, like, yes. big dudes. No, they, they have caliber players to play with everybody in the country. I can't explain what happened at Old Dominion. I'm going to tell you this. If they went out and there is catastrophe everywhere I'll, else. I'll tell you what there's happened to Old Dominion. No, there's no reason. It's what you and I talked about before the season started, where 75% of this roster... Is all seniors? Is No, is is freshmen and sophomores. Oh, oh wait, for uh, Virginia for Tech. For Virginia Tech. Yeah, Virginia Tech, yes. Yeah. I thought you were talking about Old like, Dominion's the, teams. I don't know anything it's, about them. They think they can just show up and win. Yeah. Well, they know now they can't. Yeah. And I think they're going to be fired up for this Notre Dame game. Oh, I, I, brother, if, if, if they beat Notre Dame... If they beat Clemson, if they win out, I, I think it's going to be hard to say they lost to Old Dominion. I think it's yeah. going to be real hard to say that. I think at some point in time you got to say we got to let them in. Here's the deal. You either got to let them in or you got to let UCF in. One way or another, you're holding your nose, you're swallowing a pill you don't want to swallow. That's true. That's true. Uh, Kentucky 24, South Carolina 10. Wasn't a whole lot about this game. It was ugly, nasty. South Carolina had four turnovers. Um Nobody can stop Kentucky's run game right now. Um, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm wrong. Like, on they, they didn't go crazy. Like they ran for less than 200 yards, but it was still like 190 something. So like, Kentucky, I'm, they look I, good. I haven't given them any respect. I haven't given them any credit. And you know, the first thing I did, I saw they were playing at A and M this week, and I thought, what's that line? I like A and M. And then my first thought was, how can I do that? Like, why do how I like A and M? How can I do this three weeks in a row? Am I an idiot? Am I, I mean, yeah, probably. That's I've been called hey, worse. I, I, but no. I bet against West Virginia three weeks. I, I can't I bet like I can't figure. I can't. There's nothing they do that impresses me, but they win ball games. That defensive line is na- that that whole defense is nasty. Yeah, no, their defense is shutting people down. Mark Mark Stoops has and, and we have figured, figured that side we out. We figured this out about South Carolina. My South Carolina love got to go away. You hit them in the mouth, they that offense just folds. They wilt. That that offense cannot play a team that's going to play them physical. And what's funny, I mean, they like yardage wise, about equal. Yeah, you can't win if you're giving up four turnovers on the road. Yeah. It's just in, well, it, or anywhere, or anywhere doesn't matter. Uh, Oregon forty two, California twenty four. Yeah, I was wrong on this. Uh, Oregon scored twenty eight points in the span of less than seven minutes, and. Put the entire game away. Oregon is good at football again, and it is fun to watch. Yeah, they are. This is the Oregon whew. football that I like watching, and I, I think they're still like a year away. If, I know, if Justin, I, I, like they're not, they're not there this year. If Justin Herbert stays another year, which I don't think he's going to, because I think he'll be the, I think he could be the first pick in the draft. No, like he's got that much time, six six two forty, and throws dimes. He is unbelievable. So there's a philosophy out there. That he's too tall. I've I've heard this okay. about like uh, uh, Brock Osweiler and and whatever else. There's no there's there's no great quarterback that's six six or taller. That's just too tall. Peyton Manning was what six five? Yes, and Peyton Manning is absolutely a unicorn. Because you would also never draft a quarterback that looked like Tom Brady coming out of the draft either. Today he would go undrafted. I mean, he almost went undrafted. He like, almost went undrafted yeah. when he did. So, I mean, so that's, I'm just that's telling to you, say you never really know. But, but like, I, I do think Justin Herbert, like, I think he's I think got no, stuff to work. Nobody's on. afraid of little guys. I think, I think there's something to be afraid of big guys. Yeah. Mike, Mike Glennon, he's like six six. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Looks about like that. the Jolly Green Giant. <laughs> no, no good. 
Michigan 20, Northwestern 17. I hate to bring this one up because our buddies in the West Lot Pirates. Uh, uh, who was Sam there or was? Uh, I think Sam was the one. That Sam was, was actually at the at game. The game. Uh, if we're wrong on that, whew. sorry, John or Scuzz. Uh, seventeen to nothing. Northwestern takes uh, an early lead. They lead it seventeen to seven at the half, and then Michigan puts the clamps down and finds a way to eke out a win. This Michigan but, defense is looking better and better every week. Yeah, the Michigan defense looks good. The offense, though, why? Like, why would they not want Shea Patterson to do Shea Patterson things? I, I just think, like, because he he took over this game. Let, he was the best player on the field. Let, let me tell you the biggest mistake, and, and no, everybody's going to crap on me because I'm the defender of Harbaugh. The worst thing he could have done was bring in Jim McElwain. I that's disagree just, with that. That's just the single worst thing you could have possibly done as an offensive coordinator is to say, hey, let's go get this guy, this train wreck at Florida that couldn't develop a single quarterback. All of them were five stars coming in. None of them left good. Let's make him our OC. Well, he's not the OC. He's a wide receivers coach. Whatever Pep, he's uh, he's he's a cancer to a team. Pep, Pep Hamilton still. Oh, Pep is the is he? Yeah, yeah he's still. There. Yeah, he's still he's still the guy. Pep he's he's the one I said should that. be fired after the Notre Dame game. Uh, but now Michigan's reeled off four straight wins, and you know we'll we'll see what what happens with them. Uh, they got some doozies coming up. Uh, let's roll through a couple others real quick. UCF demolished Pitt. Uh, At some point in time, we've got to start giving them more credit than they des- than, than than we're giving them. I hate that they played Pitt and not somebody that's like somewhat respectable. Well, they got to play the schedule. They played an ACC they, they, team. I know. They. I know. Uh, Memphis got destroyed by Tulane. Got to put them in the uh, the the wall of shame or whatever. Memphis can't travel. Uh, can't travel, and and God, they looked just awful. It's two road Absolutely games. Awful. Two road games. They played light garbage. And last one I've got on here: LSU put the beat down on Ole Miss, uh, forty-five to sixteen. That offense is. Uh, I know that the defense for Ole Miss is not great. But often it's not too shabby. No, it's really not. I, I think I think LSU's. I think they're going to be pretty good. We run the ball well. We throw the ball well. We're playing good special teams. The the efficiency numbers are going up, and I mean, anytime you need a confidence booster, it's nice to have <laughs> the Ole Miss defense, defense come in. Coming down, yeah. uh, hey, and that's that helped. Let me tell you something about that defense, though. That offense for Ole Miss, that uh, wide receiver, whatever NWO belt, didn't come out all day. They yeah. got one garbage time touchdown. The receiver went over there, got the belt. Receiver coach got over there and snatched it away from him. <laughs> said, we ain't Man, we are losing this. forty-four to twelve. Like what? You what don't get this belt. Yeah, that made me smile. Because <laughs> here's the thing: I I thought we could score on them. I thought this was going to be a high scoring game because I didn't think anybody in the country could. Alabama, Georgia, about the only two caliber teams I thought could shut down those receivers. Man, we shut them down. Yeah, shut them down. Made me real proud Saturday. I'm I'm with you. All right, that will close out the college football recap for week number five.